This is a bric-a-brac edging along a stripe. Sometimes you'll have seen this edging along a chevron or wavy pattern, but this is along a stripe, and you can make the stripes as wide as you want. These are two row stripes, or you can make the stripes much, much larger and add your bric-a-brac edging along those. Now for this beginning, the pattern is worked on a foundation of two, divisible by two, plus whatever chain you're using or whatever stitch you're using as your first row. So this was divisible by two, plus I began with single crochet, so I just had a one chain and worked into the second chain. Um, you could work double crochets and that would be divisible by two plus three chains for your first double crochet. And it's important to remember the count of your row because it's easy to add or decrease stitches as you're doing the row edges. So this I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And I'm beginning my end off row to change colors. So I'm going to do a yarn over. I started with the chain 3. I'm doing a yarn over and into the under the next two loops I put my hook through there, did a yarn over, pulled it through, and now I'm making a half of a double crochet. I'm doing a yarn over, and I'm pulling it through, and completing another half of a double crochet. And since I'm only putting two together, I'm going to put a yarn over and pull it through both. Now continue, yarn over, pull it through two, and I do a half of a double crochet and I'm going to continue now with another half of a double crochet yarn over and pull it through those loops and I continue working down the row uniting the double crochets and when I get to the end I have a couple more here my final two and I'm going to end off with a single double crochet at the very last chain three and you're going to have to pull it out a little bit to stretch them because they tighten up and I can give my count I've got two together here, so it's two, four, six, eight, ten, and then with the double crochets or chain three at each end, that ends, uh, adds up to twelve. So I now have my right stitches. But I'm going to change color, and I'm going to change color at this last double crochet, and I'm not going to really tie them in or add it, I'm just going to bring it up from this other color here and I'm going to complete that stitch with my double crochet or complete my double crochet with the new color and now I'm ready to begin my new color and that row and I'm going to chain three to begin that row pull it out and switch the yarn around and this is going to be a V stitch so I'm going to chain three, which I did. I am going into this first space. And you'll notice you've got the chain two, but there's this bar now that is being carried along also. So work in the space under that bar. Obviously, it's not going to make a big difference if you don't, but you will <coughs> have a bar that's carried underneath and the edging won't be as clean. So I'm going to do a double crochet in that first space. So my both ends are going to have a double crochet in it. Now I'm going to begin my V stitch, which again in the next space under the chain two on top there and the bar, I'm going to make two double crochets with a chain in between. So I just made one double crochet. I'm going to chain one 
and now I'm going to make another double crochet in that same space. So I'm beginning to make my V stitch and I'm going to continue down the row, nothing in between. I'm going to do a double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next space. And I'm going to continue down the row doing that. Make sure you go in that space underneath to pull it up so you get a nice deep V stitch. And I've got one more here. Chain one. And when I get to that last space, I wanted to match my first edge, so I'm going to be putting a double crochet in that last space, and then a double crochet at the end of inside that last chain three. So when you look at the row, I've got the V-stitches, two, four, six, eight, and then the two semi-V-stitches at each end, which gave me four, so that's the 12 count. Now I can continue this row as many double crochet rows as I want to make this row as wide as I want it to be. However, if I'm going to do a series of two rows, two stripe rows like here, it's going to be a little bit different. I have to do an alternate of the beginning and the end stitch because as you notice, this middle row, the stitches are going in between. These two rows match but their stitches go in between. So it's exactly the same stitches. It's just we have to begin the row a little bit differently to make sure they go in between the stitches and also to make sure we keep that count. This especially is where you could start really adding up stitches. So now I'm going to finish off. I'm going to do a two stripe now. So I'm going to have to end up with the alternate end. I'm not going to do the um, end that I did before to end off the row. It's a little bit of an alternate ending now, and it's not much different. We're going to begin with the chain three, turn, let me get that out of the way, and when I turn, now I'm not going to go into the next space or the next double crochet, I'm going to do a plain double crochet in there. I'm just doing the plain double crochet. I'm not beginning right off with the double crochet together. And the reason for that is I want my V stitches to be the double crochet together. So I now I'm ready. I'm on the top of my two V stitches. So now I'm ready put, to put those as my double crochets together. And I go into the top of my V stitches and do my double crochet, half of those double crochets, yarn over and pull through. And I'm going to continue down the row working in the tops of my V stitches only to bring those together. So it's like the V stitches open it up and these together stitches, pinch it back together. And this is the alternate row. When you look at the instructions either in the blog or in the pattern, you'll see that it's called an alternate. And the only time you use this is if you are going to do a series of two row stitches. Otherwise that basic one is used in between. So now I've completed the row and I'm down at the end and now I'm going to have to do two double crochets, plain double crochets in the last 
two stitches. And I'm going to count my row, pull it out so you can spread those apart. And my row is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, because you've got the four double crochets, the two at each end. And that row now is complete. But I need to change my color again now because I'm changing colors. I'm doing two rows. So I'm going to bring up my new color. And again, I'm not ending off cleanly like you would normally. But now I'm beginning my alternate beginning row. It's still the V-stitch row, but the beginning's just going to be a little different. In the other V-stitch row, we begin right away with a double crochet in the, spa in the first space. In this one, we're skipping that first space because we don't want to end up with too many stitches on the row. So in this one, I'm starting right off. I've skipped the first space and I begin right away with my V-stitch, which was the double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the space. And remember, I'm going under, not just under the top two loops, but under that bar also. And so I'm going to go in that space under the bar, do my double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and I continue down the row. Chain one, and you'll see those V-stitches are working between the V-stitches that were in the previous row because again I'm doing this center and it's going to be a little bit different. Basically it's just the, the beginning edges are different to alternate them so you can get them between and I'm doing my last one here, my last V-stitch. And I'm skipping that last space just as I did in the beginning. And I'm going to go into my final chain three or double crochet. And we can, we know the rows right if the count's right. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, and one at each end, which makes it twelve. Now to end this off, I just return to my, we're ready to do the standard ending row. Whoops, let me get that straight. I'm doing my chain three and I'm turning and I'm doing my end off row where I do the chain three and I'm bringing two together and you see I don't have to skip anything because my two V-stitches are right there. And I'm bringing my two V-stitches together so they have going from wide to being squished together. So I'm doing the tops of the two V-stitches together. And it's just a repeat of that row down there. So you can alternate the regular end row and beginning row are used between the stripes. They're the basic. If the only time you need to do this little change, the alternate beginning and ending, is when you're working several colors like this together, the chain two together, or the, the two row stripes together. Otherwise, you just have the same beginning and ending. This is the only time it's different. It can be a little confusing as long as you're always working your um, V-stitches here. You see the V-stitches. These uh, line up perfectly, these two rows, but the other row goes in between. As I said, the instructions are written out. They will be in a blog and a free pattern. And to get them, you just go to simpleandsensational.com.